Welcome back to Cresta vs Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0, proudly brought to you by Valvoline, Dolby's Parts, Raceworks and Go Fast Bits. We're down here at uh, Vandermeer Speedway. It's day four of competition, day six of the event. Uh, so we've made it all the way back here. We've, we've covered over a thousand road miles to be to this point. Um, predominantly the car's gone really well. We've had a few little niggling issues, um, ignition breakdown here at the track, actually on uh, day three of competition. And we've also had a little bit of an electrical issue where the e-throttle has kind of been a little bit vague and, and funny. Uh, we have found, however, that I miscrimped some wires when I made the extension loom for that throttle body. So uh, Matty recrimped them all last night, made it good. Um, lesson for anyone using Deutsch connectors to make sure you're using the correct uh, crimping pliers or if they're adjustable, adjust them to the correct size uh, because I had used one size too big so I didn't quite crush it enough. And although it made contact, it, you could actually slide the pins out which made an intermittent join. So. Um, yeah, lesson for those at home, uh, learn from my mistakes so you don't make them. But we're here at the track, we're basically going to get the car ready and it's a afternoon evening race event again, so from 3 till 10pm we'll be racing here. Uh, it's about 1pm at the moment, so we've uh, still got plenty of time to turn the car around and we'll get down the track as soon as we can, so let's get to it. Still did a 13260 with a miss. Yeah. Well, we're still at 890. It missed like instantly. Yeah. Like, not even like out of the hole, it was like as soon as you let off the button. And not just a misfire, like a misfire that it dropped the RPM. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like it just tried to like. It didn't dip, like it was. It went yeah. from 5,000 down to 4,800 and then back up. Oh, I felt it die. I was like, oh, this is not ideal. Two or three, please. Fourteen forty four, fourteen seventy six. Three with the forty eight Chevy Coupe goes fourteen seventeen. The home.
this time. Way off the gas is 966-109. Five zero, uh, which is our best uh, pass in competition in drag and drive in the US ever. Um, that secured A, our class win, and B, our average being an 8.58. Eight. Uh, that's also the best result we've ever had, both in a, a first place finish, and obviously our, uh, our, our average, that's the best, the best average we've ever had. Um, we do still need to drive all the way to Pueblo today to secure the win, however, on points and or on our average and, and our physical racing, we are now first in class. So uh, yeah, pretty stoked with that. Um, there's about a uh, 180 mile drive back to Bandemir today. So it's, uh, sorry, back to Pueblo today. It's not super bad run. We get to go back through the mountains again. So it's gonna be plenty more uh, fantastic scenery to be seen, no doubt. It's day five, we've officially already finished the event. So it's a four day average and on the fourth day, uh, basically you lock your times in. So we have our average, which is an 858, which is our best result ever. Uh, however, it's not official until you make it back to the track here. We have made it back to the track. We've done all the drive route. So we've done about 1200 miles. Um, we've already got cars back in the lanes because day five is a shootout day. So you've got uh, anything, anything slower than a 918, I believe they've drawn the line at, is a bracket race. Anything faster than that, we've got a heads up shootout. Uh, we've actually made it into the top eight shootout. So uh, it's a $7,500 uh, first prize shootout. So we've already pulled a chip for round one. Uh, the guy we pulled is the one guy ahead of us. So he's also run an 850. So should be a pretty exciting race. Um, I'm not confident of winning the thing, but you gotta be in it to win it. So uh, let's go and give it a go.
It was the tree, the tree. Yeah. That's all it was. Oh, well. well, unfortunately, in the first round, we were knocked out of the, uh, the shootout. Um, the guy who beat us has just run down the track in the second round, and I believe he just got knocked out as well. Uh, so I think now the final will be run. Uh, they're going to run all the shootout finals basically back to back. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, that's knocked us out. Um, so yeah, we're basically getting the car ready to get back on the road and, and head to our accommodation. Uh, there is also the presentation tonight, so we're going to be doing that as well. With the Preston, turn your ears upside down. It's Ben Neal. <laughs> Well, what a ride it's been. That wraps up our Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0 series. Uh, there's a ton of people I really need to thank. Uh, first and foremost, Dad and Matt for uh, coming and supporting me on all of these trips. Um, I, I truly couldn't do it without their support. Um, Dad's double duty this, this whole US trip on camera and helping us out with all the equipment. Uh, and tolerating all my bullshit, so I really appreciate all of his support. Um, same with Maddie, like, just couldn't do anything that we do, especially with the car side of it without Maddie. Like, he knows a thing better than I do, especially electronically with all the Haltech setup that we've got running in it. So, um, yeah, pretty cool to be able to have him by my side, especially for the back half of the year in the US on these trips. Um, and hopefully, going forward, we'll be able to team up again and do some more crazy stuff with the Nexus R5, which is going to go in the Cresta once we get it back to Australia and run a seven with it, because uh, the goal is to actually tear the car apart and give it a massive birthday, which it well and truly deserves. But I'm not gonna do it till it runs a seven, so it's gotta work for its redo. Um, my wife, Amy, for holding the fort, both at BCW and at home, looking after our kids, running the business while I haven't been here. Um, yeah, without her support, same thing. There's absolutely no way I could have done what we've done this year. Matt and June and the entire Rocky Mountain Race Week family, those guys, all their support and help storing the car, helping us get parts, shipping stuff to their place and bringing it to the track for us. Those guys just live and breathe the event and you can really see how much passion that they have for the event. It's not a money-making exercise at all. Um, they truly sort of embody the spirit of drag and drive and yeah, I've been really fortunate to be able to hang out with those guys during this event. And obviously when we dropped the car off as well, being able to hang out and chat and, and they welcomed us into their home and stored the car for us. So yeah, same massive thanks to those guys. Um, if you were gonna, I will say this, if you were gonna do one drag and drive in the US, I highly recommend that you do either Rocky Mountain Race Week or Race, two, Race Week 2.0, uh, because I feel like it has the most family atmosphere. Um, it's it's less serious where it needs to be less serious. And, and it's just, it's way more fun from a, I guess, just enjoyment point of view. Like all the different events have their own different aspects, but um, yeah, Race Week and, and Rocky Mountain Race Week definitely have a different and a bit more of a unique atmosphere. So uh, yeah, I really want to sort of reiterate that. And, and if, if you do want to do an event, I think that's where you want to start. Adam Dory, also a massive shout out to him for the commentary all week long. Um, he had a few different co-hosts during the week and I'm sorry, I can't remember who they were because um, now that we're shooting this three months later, it's testing my brain. Uh, but yeah, Adam gave us a shout out every time we're on, on the track. Um, big ups to the car and um, yeah we really appreciate his support um, and also he was running as well so being able to double duty commentating and racing was something pretty cool to watch as well and he got to race at Bandamere one more time like a lot of us did it was my first well first and second time technically but um, yeah being able to race at that amazing facility um, it's it's gut-wrenching to see that track go because it was just such a beautiful setup the track itself was amazing, but the landscape that it was in was just absolutely breathtaking as well. Um, 1320 video, same thing. Those guys took a bit more of a backseat this year in that they weren't doing as much content creation, but to their credit, they were still pumping out a ton of content and four of the guys were actually racing uh, one of Kyle's uh, Cadillacs as well. So uh, yeah, being able to watch those guys enjoy the event as an entrant, but also still be able to pump out cracking content um, yeah, I think they definitely uh, deserve some acknowledgement for that as well. Um, all the entrants, everyone else who made the event what it was, we wouldn't be able to do the events with them without them because small events eventually die off. But Rocky Mountain Race Weekend 2.0, um, definitely, they're, they're such healthy events. We've got so many entrants that turn up time after time. I've been trying to do, uh, well, originally Rocky Mountain Race Week, but this year it turned out that we did Race Week 2.0. 
Um, I've been trying to do that event for a couple of years and it just hasn't really lined up with our scheduling or shipping the car. So yeah, being able to tick that one off the list, it's uh, yeah, definitely, definitely something pretty cool. Um, massive shout out to Pueblo, Keeney and Bandami Raceways, all the staff, all the crews, everyone prepping the track. All the tracks were fantastic. It was really cool to be able to go out to some of these smaller tracks. Like Keeney is probably the smaller track that we went to, uh, but such an amazing turnout. It's, it's really part of the local community, that track there. So um, yeah, being able to go out and, and check out the place and, and go, to, go to a place where I would have absolutely no reason to go to normally. Like being able to go out to some of these more, not remote areas, but more country areas. It's cool to be able to go out there and, and explore some of the country that as a tourist, I wouldn't think, oh, we're gonna go and head out to that part of Nebraska or wherever. So um, yeah, it was awesome to be able to go out there and check it out. All the fans that came out to cheer us on, throughout the week we had heaps of people come out, come and talk to us, give us a high five. If you guys bought some shirts, every single person that bought a shirt, your money went directly to putting fuel in the car. So we really appreciate the support. Um, and yeah, being able to sort of see people all the way around the world repping our merch is pretty cool as well. Thanks to all of you guys for watching and supporting the series as well. Um, we, we can't produce content like this without um, the support of you guys, um, like sharing it and, sub and subscribing and all that sort of deal. So yeah, really appreciate your support as well. So uh, yeah, hopefully 2024 will do something a bit, bit crazy as well, but who knows what that is at this point. We can't forget our sponsors, like all the people that actually contribute financially to us to be able to do this sort of stuff. Uh, Golby's Parts, Haltech, Raceworks Australia, Go Fast Bits, Valvoline Australia and Valvoline USA, both the, the USA and the Aussie team helped us out. Um, the US team supplied us with a lot of product during the trip, so all our oils and stuff were shipped directly from the US. We didn't, fortunately, we didn't have to bring them from Australia all the way over. Uh, Empire Mechanical and Racing, the bar has just been flawless this year. Um, yeah, anything from the crank balancer to the back of the back of the crank has been flawless. Everything that's broken has been all around that, but uh, yeah, the engine has been absolutely flawless and. Pretty keen to actually pull it out and tear it down, but I still think we're gonna wait till we run the seven uh, because at the moment it's working really well, so I don't really wanna disturb it. Um, same thing, Empire Mechanical, uh, sorry, Empire Elite Performance Parts. We've absolutely tested those parts to the limit and then some, and I'm very happy to report we've broken nothing uh, from their catalog this year at all. So um, yeah, truly and wholly, if you need to buy parts that have been tested, definitely go and see the guys at Empire Elite Performance Parts. Nitrous Express, those guys jumped on a little bit later in the year for us. Um, we learned pretty early on that the car was a different animal once we'd sent it to the US and started to put it into some altitude. Um, being able to put nitrous on the car, I'd always been really hesitant and I actually regret not doing it a lot earlier because it totally transformed the car and it's allowed us to do so much more stuff with it. Um, so yeah, highly, highly recommend their setups because it was super simple to install. The kit came with every single component that you needed. And uh, yeah, we had the whole thing up and running in about two and a half hours. The only thing we did need to do was obviously fill the bottle because they can't ship full bottles. Um, also got to give a shout out to Can Cut Drill Bits. Uh, same thing, those guys jumped on a little bit later, but I did my very first experience with their product ever, probably kept the Mustang back or in sick week. I can't remember which track it was, Bradenton. So the Mustang broke a flex plate at Bradenton and we had to drill the dowel holes into the new flex plate and their drill bits were absolutely flawless. And as a result, we kind of struck up a bit of a conversation and yeah, pretty proud to be able to say that those guys partnered with us for the end of our Dragon Drive series. Um, also another shout out to Charleston Performance Solutions. Uh, they're one of the OGs in our support for our Dragon Drives. They were the first shop that we actually teamed up with uh, for Drag Week 2018 and 2019 when we were shipping our car into Charleston. Um, those guys have actually just opened up in a new location. So uh, yeah, by the time you watch this video, it should be up and running. So if you're in the Charleston area, definitely recommend to check it out. Um, I've been talking for heaps. So uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. Again, can't thank all you guys enough. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.